Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another of our SFP, the University of Queensland uh, seminars. Uh, today, we are featuring Dr. Adriana Palacios. She's uh, currently a professor at the Uni Universidad de las Americas Puebla in Mexico. Uh, she completed her PhD in chemical process engineering from the Technical University of Catalonia. Then she was part of the research staff at the Center for Technological Risk Studies of um, the same university. Uh, she carried out various uh, research uh, projects on related to chemical process risk, mathematical modeling, and some other uh, issues. Then she was appointed as a Newton International Fellow of the Royal Society in charge of the research project experimental studies and mathematical and computational modeling of jet fires as research staff uh, at the School of Mechanical Engineering in the University of Leeds. Uh, then she became an advanced fellow for uh, yeah, the same program in, in the Universidad de las Americas Puebla and she's in charge on different research projects. Uh, currently, she collaborates with uh, researchers from all around the world. So Adriana, it's a pleasure, it's an honor for all of us to have you presenting today. Um, before we start the presentation, just a little bit of housekeeping. We remind our attendees to keep their mics off during the presentation. Uh, Adriana will, will present, and then we will have a, a space at the end uh, for questions and answers. So yeah, thank you Adriana for joining us. It's a pleasure and the, the floor is yours. Thank you, Julian. So good morning, good evening to all of you. So let's share my screen so we can start. Please let me... No, if you can see my my screen, can you see it, Julian? Uh, yeah, I think it's transitioning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can. All right. So thank you very much for the opportunity to be here. I'm very excited. I'm very happy to be here. And uh, just before starting this talk, I want to ask you a question. Yeah, does anybody know what is shown in this slide? Anyone, you can write in this chat. It's uh, it's not the Beatles, it's not tamales, it's not, uh, what do you think it is? Anyone in the chat? <laughs> Anybody know what is this? Okay, <laughs> so, so it is tacos, right? It is Mexican tacos. And uh, let me tell you that uh, tacos are made from tortillas, and and this and uh, this is like show in many many places in Mexico. The production of tortillas and indeed uh, the cooking of food is still involves firewood through the use of firewood stoves, right? Uh, however, uh, worldwide Mexico ranks fifth in deforestation. Furthermore, according to an analysis by the Center for Social Studies and Public Opinion of the Chamber of Deputies, between 90% and 95% of the Mexican territory is deforested. And also, according to data from the Institute of Geography of the National Autonomous University of Mexico, 500,000 hectares of forests and jungles are lost every year in Mexico. So uh, it is really my pleasure to show you today how fire safety engineering knowledge can be used and can be applied to aim to solve uh, some of the national and international problems. So let's start. Uh, the contents for this presentation involve First of all, uh, we will give brief ideas of the context of firewood in Mexico. Then uh, we will show some findings about the hydrogen production in Mexico. Uh, I mean, the state of the art, the future perspectives, the challenges, and the opportunities. 
And then we will move to the LPGA hydrogen stops and hydrogen jet fire experiments. And finally, uh, I, I have a gift from my students, collaborators to you. They prepare some gift fires that I am going to, to show you. So, so let's start. Uh, talking about the context of firewood in Mexico, I want to give you some data. And um, the first one is that wood is the main fuel for 28 million of people in Mexico. Uh, that means that 21% of the total Mexican population is using wood as the main fuel. So it's really a lot of people, a lot of people. Um, the second one is that 16.4 million of families at the center and at the south of the country in conditions of poverty and marginalization, they still use firewood stops to cook their food, all their food. And third, 90% uh, of the firewood users live in rural areas. And finally, uh, the Mexican in the Mexican tropical region, that is at the south of the country, uh, the 31.8 of the families use firewood as the main energy source to cook, uh, to heating, to, to have light. So this is the panorama, right? So the real problems involved in the use of firewood in Mexico and in, in many other countries, uh, we can see two. The first one, of course, is the health, health, health effects, sorry. So because the gases can penetrate into the respiratory systems of the people and in their organs, and um, of course, all the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons are toxic, mutagenic, and often can be carcinogenic, right? And the ashes also contain elements like lead, iron, zinc, so it's, it's very, very dangerous. Um, and the second, the second problem, of course, that we have already mentioned is deforestation, right? Uh, in this slide, I am showing you, showing you the six principal places in Mexico. So you can see the orange squares. These are the six principal places in Mexico in where the deforestation is really, really high, right? So we have places like Chiapas, Oaxaca, Guerrero, the places near Mexico City, Veracruz, and Puebla, the place where I am here now. And specifically, I want to say that at the south of the country, the places near Guatemala and Belize, this is the tropical region of Mexico. As we have already said, there in these places, the 31.8 of the Mexican families use firewood as the main energy source. So that means, and it is not a surprise, that these places are the most deforested in all the country that the map shows, all right? So let's move to the next one. And this is why what I am going to show you is that yes, uh, uh, firewood is used in Mexico in many places, and specifically at the south of the country. If we look into this slide, uh, into the map, the orange region shows in, in this uh, pink square that they use uh, firewood, right? But actually in Mexico, talking about other fuels, the main source of energy comes from LPG, right? So in general, the fuel that we use the most in the country to do all our energy processes are is LPG, right? And for example, at the north of the country, in the yellow region, it represents the 77%. Yes, we use LPG in the 77% compared to other fuels. At the center, it's the 85%, and at the south, is 64%. So what I am saying that, right? Because if we are talking about other fuels in Mexico, uh, it, it can be said that a 79 corresponds to LPG, followed by 11% of coal, and finally 7% for natural gas. And this is important because later we are going to talk about the experiment, experiments. And it, 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 please keep in mind that in Mexico, the main fuel is LPG and that we have real serious problems of deforestation, right? So uh, this is the end of the first section. 
and much more information can be found in this publication if you want more details about deforestation and all these wood burning stuff. And this was uh, uh, that was sorry a collaboration between Mexico and the University of Leeds in UK. And the main conclusions that I want you please to keep for this first part to summarize the context of firewood in Mexico are the following. First one. 28 million of people in Mexico still use wood for cooking, lightning, and heating. Second one, 16.4 million of people in Mexico still have firewood as the only fuel for cooking, right? Third, 31.8 percentage of the, of the Mexican families use this fuel, firewood, as the main energy source. And because of all these reasons, worldwide Mexico ranks fifth in deforestation. Right. So now that the problem is settled, let's move to the possible solution. Sorry. So let's talk about hydrogen. Hydrogen is considered an essential chemical feedstock widely used in large-scale industry. Therefore, hydrogen production has received worldwide attention. And in Mexico, is not the exception, right? Some of the advantages that we have found uh, in uh, studies, in advanced studies, is that hydrogen can be produced and stored for later consumption. Hydrogen seems to be an alternative to eliminate and, re and reduce CO2 emissions. Hydrogen energy density is higher than that of conventional fossil fuels. And hydrogen doesn't emit greenhouse gases, which in the medium and long term contributes to the deceleration of climate change. So uh, this is why hydrogen is called the fuel of the future, since it has a high heat of combustion, it is compatible with the environment, since its only combustion product is water, right? Uh, but really, all these advantages, we need to focus also on the challenges, right? Uh, hydrogen needs to be ensured that be efficient in large-scale production. And also, we have to be very sure that we can store him, it sorry, in a compact way. And of course, from the fire safety point, it's very important for us to store a, to store the hydrogen in a very safe way, right? So this is really the challenges that, that hydrogen faces now. Okay, uh, so some of the opportunities that we have found for for hydrogen in Mexico are the following. Uh, Hydrogen is a fuel with a great potential since it's a global trend. Now it's a global trend uh, with levels of research and development being increased every year around the world, right? So Mexico really has the potential to implement a new strategy, energy strategy involving hydrogen. Yeah, we have the potential. But to do that, Mexico really needs to consider the challenges and the opportunities in the public, national, and international agenda to link and really collaborate with other countries, facilitating the development and implementation of hydrogen technology. Um, and we will see all these ideas later in the project that, that we have in collaboration with other countries, and I want to talk to you this later. Right, but until now, uh, this is like a brief summary, and this is the end of this second section about hydrogen. And of course, much more detailed information about all this hydrogen production in Mexico can be found in this publication. And this publication has a collaboration between the university here in Kerala and with the Autonomous University of Yucatan at the south of the country in Mexico. And the main conclusion that I really want you to keep in mind for this second section of hydrogen and the state of the earth in Mexico, the future perspectives, the challenges and the opportunities are the, the following. 
the first one is that uh, hydrogen has a clean combustion, possibly eliminating CO2 emissions. Uh, the second one is that hydrogen has a more efficient use, requiring less maintenance. Uh, the third one is that hydrogen is present in most abundant substances and elements. And the fourth one is that hydrogen is more decentralized and less vulnerable than crude systems to vandalism and supply problems, for example, than hydrocarbons. And I want to finish this section with this slide. What I mean by vandalism and supply problems Unfortunately, I don't know if you are aware, in Mexico, uh, in the past years, we have, unfortunately, I say again, the illegal obtention of fuels because uh, due to vandalism, the pipelines that distribute the, the oil and the fuels around the country are broken and they illegally obtain the, the fuel. And it's not only the illegal action of, of, of obtaining the fuel, it's because all this fuel is released into these places. And of course, we know that it will find, finally, it will find an ignition source and it will end in an explosion, it will end in a fire, and with big consequences for the people. So we are also trying to, to, to stop this with uh, the use of other types of energy. All right. But now, uh, now finally, uh, we have talked about the deforestation programs and all the problems involved with the firewood use in Mexico. We have also talked a little bit of the possible solution that seems to be hydrogen. And now, now it's time for me to say how to show you how fire is involved in all these problematic solutions and all these fire safety engineering knowledge, right? So. Let's move to uh, talk about LPG hydrogen stocks and hydrogen jet fire experience. Right, so this is what I showed. Sorry, two uh, accidental jet flames occur in Spain. Uh, in the left, uh, we have a broken pipeline, and then the jet fire uh, appears into the city. Uh, and on the left and the right side, it's the same broken pipelines, broken and finding emission source and creating this enormous jet fire or jet flame. So this is only to show that jet flames not only occurs in Barcelona or in Mexico, they occur everywhere. And jet fires are one of the major fire accidents occurring in the chemical, petrochemical industries and in the transportation of hazardous materials, right? Jet fires are originated by the use of containment and ignition of a flammable gas, vapor, or spray uh, released through a hole, a broken pipe, a flange, or in process air. Uh, jet flames usually involve high heat fluxes, and its direct effects are often confined to relatively shorter distances as compared to those associated to other types of fires. For example, co compared with a pool fire, compared with a flash fire, or compared to a firewall, jet fire seems to be smaller, right? But however, uh, the importance of jet fires is that jet fires can frequently uh, be considered as the first stage of further major accidents. What do I mean? Uh, because the effects of Jet flame impingement and the heat radiation of jet fires on the nearby equipment, this can often provoke a chain of events that ultimately amplifies the severity of the accident. I mean, it's that it starts with a jet flame, it, it impinges on other equipment, and then we have an explosion, another fire, three more explosions, and finally we lost everything. So this is of these chains of events, accidental events, finishing in the destruction of chemical plants or installation. This is often referred as the domino effect. And according to some uh, historical analysis, one of two jet flames often ends in a domino effect. So this is the importance of this major five accident. Right, so now let me show you our beautiful large scale open field jet fires obtained in Barcelona. 
I hope you enjoy the video and then we can continue with the, with the talk. Right, so uh, I will stop the presentation and I will put a video. So please let me know that you can see the video and that you can see the, and then you can hear, right? Because it's, it's very important. So I am going to play it and be, and please let me know, Julian or Thomas, that, that you can hear, you can see it, right? So let's start. Okay, can you see it? Can you hear it? I will put it again only to explain what are you seeing. So these are jet planes, a large scale open field obtained in Barcelona. The fuel is propane and we reach subsonic and sonic conditions. That noise that you hear is because the sonic condition for the fuel has been reached, right? So we also put a mass of thermocouples to measure the flame access temperature of the jet, we also put some radiometers to obtain the heat flux, infrared, a visible camera, and all, and all the things that we can get from the experiment. Right, so I, I want to show you this because uh, after, let me really come back to the presentation. Right, let's see. Okay, let me see. All right, so after 16 years of studying experimentally, mathematically and computationally the jet plane behavior. And now we have collected uh, the biggest jet plane database in the world, right? It gives uh, correlations to predict the jet plane type mm -hmm, in the subsonic, sonic, and supersonic regions. And it has been validated with 834 jet plane experiments. So that means that we were able to cover jet plane heights ranging between 0 0.08 millimeter, very small hydrogen, almost invisible planes, to 110 meters, involving these large flares that you can see in the chemical and petrochemical uh, industry. So all of them are here, these small hydrogen planes and these enormous huge flares. The pipe diameters that are uh, involved in these correlations, suggested correlations, sorry, range between 0.4 millimeter to uh, 1.3 meter. And the estimation release pressures uh, range between 0 0.06 megapascal to 90 megapascal with high pressure hydrogen jet planes that we have been working. And uh, this slide shows that the suggested correlations that we have found. Uh, they involve six different fuels until now. They are useful for hydrogen, for methane, for propane, ethylene, acetylene, and butane. So uh, I want to show you this because it has just, it's a recent work after all these years working on, on jet planes. Okay. Um, now, let me tell you that this is a very nice moment and very important moment because now for us, it's a very good satisfaction to make possible uh, the development of technology with all this knowledge generated from the study of jet fires, right? So we are studying jet fires for a long time, and now it's the time that all this knowledge of how the jet plane behaves can be applied to the development of certain technology. Talking about the previous problems that we were saying at the beginning. So specifically, the, the work that is on the progress now involving an international collaborative project with Mexico, uh, Leeds, Australia, and the government in Mexico, in the city of Puebla, is that we are designing experimental prototypes of domestic stocks using hydrogen and hydrocarbon blends as a fuel. And as I say, it's work on the progress. Right, so we have seen all the problematic about the firewood in Mexico. We have seen the possibility to use hydrogen as an option. And we understand the jet plane behavior 
And, and as if you see the story, it has really jet planes inside the, the cult formers. And all the knowledge about the jet plane behavior, it's amazing that it can be applied to the design of these domestic exos. So uh, what I want to show you on the left of the slide is that we are still, uh, we are now in the design of all the experimental CITO. And as you can see from the experimental CITO, is that we have hydrogen and LPG tanks. I say LPG, do you remember that LPG is the most useful fuel in Mexico? When I, uh, because we are working with Australia, we are working with UK, there uh, is natural gas, but here we are using LPG. So that's why we are using blends of LPG and hydrogen. So anyhow, this we have this blend, and then we put them into domestic uh, stocks, right? And it's very interesting, and let me tell you, when we start all this project, the people that is not involved in this field, uh, we have meetings with the government and with other people, and they say to us, uh, but it has to be the same, hydrogen, methane, LPG, all of them are the same. They have to behave the same. They, have to, they need to have the same properties. And of course, we know that this is not true. A hydrogen flame is different from an LPG flame and all the properties. And when they are mixed, of course, they are different. So really, uh, we are very happy to be starting this project. And as we mentioned before, we need the collaboration of other countries that have done this beautifully with uh, natural gas and, and hydrogen blast. Right, but let's continue. So uh, some previous studies, I'm sorry, some previous studies done by some of our research collaborators shows the use of methane and hydrogen blends in domestic stocks, and this is shown on the left. So on the left, we see to this uh, amazing picture. So on the left, we they found our collaborators found in the UK that if you have a methane and you add until thirty percent of hydrogen you have a stable flames in the boilers, right? So we will talk about this later, but the experiment is that you start adding some hydrogen to methane, pure methane, and then start adding hydrogen. And you find then you can have a stable flame. Until now, if you have natural gas, you have methane, and you add 30% of hydrogen into the mixture, you can have a stable flame, and you can have these domestic stops working. Right? So this is in the UK in 2019. And on the right, it is, it is fantastic. On the right, also in UK with other of our collaborators, collaborators sorry, we have 100% hydrogen frames working on a domestic uh, stocks. Right? So let me show you, you can see, you can see the photos and see that it's high, it's flame and it's 100% hydrogen. But let me tell you uh, one very interesting thing that uh, our collaborator told to us. When you have hydrogen flames, the hydrogen is almost invisible. It's invisible, right? It's not natural gas. It's not propane that is luminous. It's invisible. So they have flame, stable hydrogen flames, burning into the domestic stoves and they cannot see the fire. So imagine that you cannot see the fire, but you can feel the radiation and you know that the flame is there. So they have to put some compounds uh, to, to make it visible. So that is why the color, this orange, strange orange flame, is not the color of hydrogen. They have to add something. But anyhow, what I want to show you is that with all these previous research, we are doing our current uh, project on LPG and hydrogen stuff. So let's go. Uh, the benefits that we are aiming to obtain with the current research project by replacing the regular stops with uh, uh, stops that use LPG and hydrogen blends are the following. Uh, first one, we want less wood consumption. Second one, deforestation reduction. Third one, Greenhouse gases emissions mitigation. For one, less investment of time and money for wood. Fifth, less expulsion, expulsion sorry, of smoke outside the houses. And finally, the, one of the most important for us, protect people from fires and prevent the respiratory diseases. 
the BCRD, who's one of the involved and we are used to obtain in the project. So uh, now concerning the hydrocarbon, hydro hydrogen blends behavior. Now uh, I am going to show you what are the findings until now when we have uh, the, 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 the things that we have found, sorry, until now. How is the behavior between hydrogen and LPG flames with these gestures? Right? So we will start. The first one is which is the effect of hydrogen enrichment on the instability of LPG hydrogen flames? Remember that you have this blend, but you have to be sure that the flame is stable because if it's not stable, it can be extinguished and then you can have a release of all the fuel and then you can have a, a, a toxic, a flammable cloud and then it will end in an explosion, right? So this is important for the stability of the flames. So let's see. So while uh, many, uh, while Mario, Wu and other colleagues have found is that we uh, did start experiments and they have LPG or propane and they start adding hydrogen little by little. So this is the plot that is on the on the right. Okay, please focus on the oh, I got this. So no, right, sorry. So please focus on this uh, field, uh, field square. They are hydrogen and LPG or propane mixtures. And if you can see, they start adding hydrogen 10, 20, 30, 40. Percent. And what they have found is that um, when you have a blend of LPG and hydrogen, when you have more than 40% of hydrogen addition, the flame completely extinct. The flame disappears. The flame is not stable anymore. So if you want a stable LPG hydrogen flame, you don't need to be, you don't, you don't need to add more than 40% of hydrogen. So this is very, very interesting and it's fantastic and we need to keep this in mind. Um, the, the reason for the flame to be stable with a smaller energy supply rate after adding hydrogen may be due to an improved air fuel mixing caused by the high burning velocity and the efficiency of hydrogen. Uh, this is a theory, of course, and we are still trying to understand and give some uh, analysis for this phenomenon, right? But this is about stability. Not more than 40% of hydrogen if you want a stable LPG hydrogen flame, right? So now uh, let's move to the second one. We will talk about now the effect of hydrogen concentration on the jet flame, on the flame temperature of a uh, premixed LPG hydrogen flame. So what happens with the temperature when we have this hydrogen LPG phase? So uh, let's see. According to Chen and colleagues, uh, the data have demonstrated that with the addition of hydrogen into the LPG fuel, the flame, the flame temperature start increasing, right? So I put on the right only one plot that is some of the results, but they start little by little adding hydrogen into the LPG. And they found that when it arrives uh, to the 50% of hydrogen and 50% of LPG, they have almost the same temperature that the pure LPG. But and also it, it is shown that the flame with hydrogen addition, the red one, has a higher, a higher temperature than the pure LPG flame. Right? So that means that with this kind these blends of LPG and hydrogen, we can reach at least. Uh, the same temperatures of a pure LPG or more, more temperatures, right? So maybe 50% and we will talk about this later, right? Because 40% is not stable, but we can find a balance between that it has to be stable, but it has uh, the same temperature of a pure hydrocarbon, in this case, LPG, all right? This is about, this is talking about the flame temperature. And um, finally, let me show you the last effect that we have found. Uh, this is the effect of hydrogen concentration on the heat transfer. And this has been done for a methane, methane hydrogen flame, not just on the LPG, but, but it is useful. This is also very really useful because they are kind of carbon. So what we have done this in these um, figures 3A to D, what they are showing, let me, let me explain. They are showing the effect of progressively increasing the proportion of hydrogen in the mixture. What I, what I mean, 
in the y-axis, we have the thermal power, the heat, uh, the total heat release rate. And on the way, uh, and then we have in the x-axis, the fuel velocity. And we have three different lines. The solid line, the, the, the outer line in all the, the small plots, indicates the total heat release of the mixture, of the hydrogen mixture with the methane, right? This is the upper solid line. And the dust, dashed lines below the, that one, the solid, uh, gives the contribution of each component. So that's why you can read methane or hydrogen, methane or hydrogen. This is, this is one, these are the meaning of these three lines. The total heat release of the mixture and then the, the heat release for each component. But, but the fantastic thing that we have found, because we have been adding hydrogen in the first one at the left upper part, and I have a last one, I saw that. Uh -huh. in, this, in this plot, we have at 20% of hydrogen, then we are 30% of hydrogen, then we are 50% of hydrogen, and finally we are 80% of, of hydrogen. The pipe diameter was two millimeter. And what we have found is fantastic because uh, what, we have, what we have found, sir, is that with the 20 or the 30% of hydrogen addition, we have the higher total heat release rate of the mixture. Yes, you can see that the values range uh, up to 10 when you have 20 or 30% of hydrogen. And if you continue increasing more hydrogen, uh, then the total heat release starts decreasing. So there is any point to put more hydrogen. And, and that was a very good news for us because we have previously known that the flame is not stable. So there is no, no sense to, to have more hydrogen if it's not stable. And also because the total heat release is not going to be very high. So we were very happy to say that the same range of hydrogen addition will have the higher total heat release rate in the mixture. Right, and this has just been last year when we found all this. So that was fantastic. Uh, so this is the end of the last and uh, the third section. And of course, much more detailed information, experiments, and all details can be found in this publication. That was also a collaboration between the University of Leeds in UK and Leeds in Mexico. And uh, the main conclusions that I want to give you please for this third section uh, are the following. Uh, the first one is that jet fires, uh, the jet fires knowledge is useful for the design of domestic stoves using hydrogen and hydrocarbon blends as a fuel, right? Uh, the second one is that for LPG hydrogen blends, when we have, uh, when the percentage of hydrogen addition is higher than 40%, the flame completely extinct, disappears, blow off. It's not stable anymore. So no more than 40% of hydrogen addition. Uh, the third one is that the addition of hydrogen in LPG fuel makes the flame temperature start increasing, right? And specifically with a 50% of hydrogen, 50% of LPG mixture, the flame uh, has the same temperatures. But it, also, it can also be seen that the flame with hydrogen addition has been found to have a higher temperature than the pure LPG flame, right? And, and of course, there is still too much work to do. We are still working on this. And of course, uh, there is many things to do. So uh, here we have some selected references for the work. And, Finally, and now less important, uh, let me show you some of the students that collaborate with me in all these results that I am uh, showing and sharing to you. So thank you very much, Pedro, Mariana, Paulina, Eduardo, and to many other students. I can include the slides on the slides of them. Thank you very, very, very much. Um, and I promise, uh, this is my last two comments uh, for the presentation. Uh, the first one is that Eduardo Lopez, I was waiting for you photo for the presentation and it never arrived, right? So I decided to put this, this photo and I think that now we have a very good chance to have people interested in joining our research group. I research group. So I hope uh, you don't mind. Um, and the second one is that my students prepare some fire gifts 
uh, for you. And these are concerning some of the CAD simulation results. And, and I will show you after giving at the end of this talk. So uh, thank you very much again for the time, for the opportunity to give this talk. And I hope you enjoy the, the gifts from my students. And uh, thank you. So let me show you the gifts and then we will finish. So here uh, they prepare uh, some comparisons of training behavior. We're still working on them, so please be comprehensive with us. So we have methane, hydrogen, and propane, and we are trying to simulate them with SDS and, and try to see how they, they are different. So really first, uh, this is the same behavior. Then we will move to, okay, yes. We are also trying to get the temperature profile, and it was very difficult. It was not stable. We, we didn't see anything, and now we get but we get some right, so we are still working on them. And um, finally, the third one that they want me to, to show you is uh, the velocity profile. So I think they are here, so if you have some questions, you can ask me also, they are able to, to reply. So I think that's all. And uh, again, thank you very much for the opportunity of your time, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Adriana, for your for your presentation. Uh, very interesting to see how uh, people around the world are studying alternatives to um, fight uh, climate change and uh, to well and also to to prevent uh, respiratory uh, diseases in in people, especially the ones exposed to um, less privileged conditions. Um, so thanks very much for your presentation and uh, for, for uh, being here today. We have a few questions. I, I don't know if you want me to read them for you or if you want to read them and uh, address them. Okay, can you read them, uh, Thomas? Yes. So the first one uh, from Wasim, um, he's asking why the hydrogen flame is colorless is it because it's it's clean or has no soot? Uh, what causes the radiation flux in this kind of flame? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, the answer is it, it's almost invisible, right? Because of soot, it doesn't produce too much soot. For example, for hydrocarbons, uh, they get a, a bigger weight. They, they create more soot. For example, I remember when we were in Barcelona, we were working with methane, with propane, and methane to propane. Propane is more luminous because it has more soot, because it, it, it's bigger and it has a bigger weight than methane. But I remember they were working with pool fires and they use gasoline, right? So compare methane or hydrogen that are very light with gasoline, octane, and other endocane. And I can remember and I can show you the photos with a big, big cloud, gray, uh, black cloud because of the soot. So yes, the answer is in the soot, right? And the weight of the, of the compound, right? And, and he also asked me another thing I forgot. <laughs> so. Uh, yes, um, yes. What causes the radiation flux in this kind of flame? Uh, the, the radiation, yes, it, it's different. And I, I'm sorry to say it's only different. We can come back to the to this slide. Just let me show you this. this right. So look, look to this. And I think I also see a question in the chat saying how we measure this thermal power, the heat radiation. So we use, use radiometers. Radiometers, some of them measure convective heat and some of them radiative heat. And we have radiometers with the total the radiation, convection and, and radiation all together. So here, for example, uh, we have hydrogen, a pure hydrogen and pure methane. And the heat radiation, you can see, it, it depends. If it's 20% is less than the pure than the methane, right? But it's not always the same because when we add more hydrogen, uh, the heat radiation of hydrogen is higher. But uh, to answer the questions, I don't make any false. It, it, it's lower, right? But the, but the good thing is that when they are mixed, 
the, the behavior change and it can give you a, a, to, a, to, a, a total heat release higher than the pure hydrocarbon. So this is the advantage, okay? Thank you. We have another question from, from Gerardo. He's asking, uh, what do you think would be the pros and cons for fire, firefighters intervening a fire with hydrogen? Mm, interesting question. Very interesting. Yeah, because hydrogen is it's, it's flammable, but it's also explosive, right? <laughs> so they are not fighting only with fire. They will start fighting with explosions. So I think it's it's different. The hydrogen is very stable. I, I can show you. We have a small jet fuel of hydrogen with, with two millimeter, five millimeter stable. Right, so maybe fire is not the the, the biggest consequence of this of, of this kind of these accidents. The problem is that they can release all the hydrogen and create these flammable clouds, and with these flammable clouds, you can have even fires or explosions. So we have to be prepared for both. That is very explosive, not only flammable. And is is, is that something you're studying at, at uh, <laughs> university there too? Uh, not yet, but uh, our collaborators from uh, UK, because do you, do you remember Bonds, right, in 2005? It was a flammable cloud, uh, gasoline that evaporates, and it covers all the plant, and that, uh, that ignites, creates fires, and then explosions. So this is the dangerous with uh, explosive and uh, flammable compounds. Okay. Uh, I can do this test, but, uh, I'm looking for to do these explosions. <laughs> I hope they won't happen in, in real life, only, only in studies. Only in studies, yes, of course. Uh, Diana has uh, another question uh, about the current limitations in the implementation of hydrogen as a main source of energy in Mexico and uh, worldwide. Yes, yes, very, very interesting question, Diana. Uh, because of course it's two lines uh, we are doing experiments and all the experiments are set up but we also need to face the challenges to, to have hydrogen the first challenge is the production right the production of hydrogen is a challenge how you are going to to store it how are you going to distribute it so and these are the challenges it's not, not only to put the hydrogen and, and lpg blends no, how are you going to produce it? How are you going to store it? How are you going to transport it? So these are the challenges, right? And uh, as we have said, it's explosive, it's flammable. You cannot store it in, in, in a normal place, right? We need many safety measurements. So I think these are the challenges and the, the things that we need to be prepared, right? Not, it's also important to, to design the experiments and see how they can behave. But also very important, how are we going to obtain the hydrogen and make it and put it there into the installations? Right? So, so the transition from uh, wood fire uh, to to hydrogen or hydrogen car carbon carbon uh, hydrocarbon uh, fuels is not straightforward. It's a uh, it's it's a second derivative and and a challenge by itself. Thank you. And uh, more questions. We have heaps of questions. Uh, so are there any specific provisions that may make you put in a structure design that would assist a fire safety strategy dealing with hydrogen? Yes, yes. For example, only as an example, in the University of South of Australia, where they are preparing this experimental setup, and uh, we have stars like from two years ago, and we have to pass many safety measurements from civil protection and, and all these fire safety teams. Like you need a special, well, only to give some example, ex, uh, safety doors, special doors to do the experiments, right? It cannot be a normal lab, right? Because of the risk of explosions and all this. So, so I don't know if I answered the question, yes, it's, it's complicated and we need to take all the safety measurements. Hydrogen uh, itself is very dangerous. And if, if you are going to blend, imagine that you say to the university, I want to work with hydrogen. It's risky, right? And then you say, but I want to blend with hydrocarbons. More risky. And you say, and I want to, to have a fire with them. <laughs> they say, okay, safety measurements on 
the things that you want to to tell us to protect. So yeah, let me say in Russian means. You know, so, if I so reply. Probably there's uh because it's it's new ish. Uh, there there's probably no specific like standard or provisions specific <laughs> for for that blend or or hydrogen in particular. I don't exactly. know. Exactly. Talking about Mexico, Mexico. In Mexico, we don't have a, how to say, a legislation, especially for hydrogen, only to, to show you how this, uh, this topic is very new for us and that we are in, in the development of this new energy. There is any law talking about hydrogen. So imagine if you want to try to work with hydrogen and there is any law that say to you, the maximum quantities of hydrogen that you can use in a lab or in a in, in industry and talking about experiments no we couldn't find anything so we are using other fuels uh, as comparison but until now uh, there is no regulation so only to show you how, how difficult it is yeah. and how yeah. how difficult and how nice it is to be in new topics right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> right challenging yeah <laughs> Jeronimo has another question uh, what method ah, you you addressed this one uh, what method was used to measure the heat release or heat power for the tests conducted mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and then how hydrogen uh, this is from forest gene how hydrogen are produced in commercial quantities yes uh, it's good it, it, it can come from many many ways like it can come imagine all the ways but it can also come from hydrocarbons right <laughs> so it's it's amazing it can come from natural ways and it can come from hydrocarbons it can come from catalytic processes so so the list is, is very long right but it can be obtained from many, many ways but some of the ones i want to mention catalytic process from the hydrocarbons and from natural process, right? Is it just out of curiosity? Is it uh, you get the hydrocarbon and then the hydrogen from separate sources and then you you mix it in a, in a third facility or something like that? Uh, yeah, it, it, no, it, no, it doesn't make sense that you obtain hydrogen to hydrocarbon. Now here we have uh, pure hydrogen. Yeah. Right. But as I mentioned before, the challenge is how, and this is a very good question, how are you going to produce this hydrogen? Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, most most of the countries are trying to find, find that way. Uh, and not only produce it, how are you going to transport? How are you going to distribute the hydrogen? So, yeah, many things to do in this topic. Yeah. Um, then Wasim, again, another question. What measurements are you collecting to compare the models with the experimental results? And uh, can you elaborate on the techniques you are using, the experimental techniques? Yeah, so what we are trying to measure now is, uh, you know, when you do these kind of experiments, they are, they are very difficult, they are very extensive. So actually, for example, as the experiments on the video that I show you, you plan experiments and you try to measure all the things that you can measure, right? Because it's only two or three times long. So for us, we are interested in the stability of the frame. So we measure uh, the release pressure, the diameter, diameter that we are using. We are also measuring the jet plane axis temperature. We measure the CO2 concentrations right around the flame. We are also measuring radiation with the radiometers, the heat, the total heat release. We are measuring, uh, talking about geometry of the flame, we are measuring uh, the jet flame length uh, with visible infrared cameras, right? Because sometimes the flame are transparent like hydrogen and, and we cannot see them with visible cameras, so we use infrared cameras. So, so my answer is we try to measure all the geometry, all the radiative features that we can, and also the instability in data. And say, uh, um, can you elaborate on the techniques you are using? Experimental techniques. Yeah, well, I, 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 no, I answered your question like experimental techniques. Uh, we have to calibrate all the equipment, right? And we don't go to the open field first. We do all this in a lab scale, test all the experiments, two or three repetitions. And after we are sure that everything works in the lab, this small scale, 
we're going to we go to the open field. Thank you. Um, then uh, he Heman from India, uh, he's asking if, if you were adding any odor to, to hydrogen, just as they do with, with uh, natural gas, to, to tell if there's a leak or not. No, no, the, the problem with hydrogen is that, as I told you, it's almost invisible, right? I remember we were in China, in China uh, the first time, uh, like, like years ago, when we started doing this hydrogen jet flames and we have our infrared camera. And it was invisible, right? And we were in front of the, of the flame and we cannot see it just because we have the infrared camera and we can see there is flame, but it's invisible, invisible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. could you, could you, can you smell it? Does it have a smell? I've, I've never seen it. Well, uh, no, I don't know. I, I cannot smell anything, but I cannot smell anything. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is another problem. <laughs> no, I think the answer is no. No, and also, for example, uh, other hydrocarbons, for example, talking about LPG in, uh, in Mexico, they don't have the, any smells. In Mexico, they put some smell intentionally to, to as you say, uh, as you say in this uh, Indian uh, Indian friend Hemant, right? In Mexico they put Merca, I don't know the name in English, Merca metacarpa mer uh, compound. So make uh, that it smells. So in Mexico we have a leak. We can notice that the, 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 there is a gas release in the house, right? In the kitchen or in the other places. So I think the answer is no. Thank you. And then Wasim has two questions. Um, so uh, FDS gives the um, heat release rate location, which is not, which not necessarily represent the structure of the flame. Is there some way you are using to represent the flame volume uh, slash structure in FDS? Mm -hmm. Yes, very, very good question. So it is WHA a question. Yeah, this is true. So no, uh, this is only work on the progress and you're, you're right. Uh, the heat release rate location doesn't necessarily represent the structure, right? And you can see from the heat flight. Until now, if you can see these bigger hydrogen flames and the small hydrocarbons, we are not expecting this in reality. Mm -hmm. So we are now still working on that, right? We were, I'm glad that question arrives because the students are here and I and, and this is we are working on that when I saw, saw the glyphs I say they have the same fuel as the mass flow rate right and it seems that the hydrogen is huge and the hydrocarbons are small so we are not expecting that but we are working on that right so this kind of questions motivate us to say what we need to do to do it to work to make it work right yeah homework for the students <laughs> Exactly. So let's go, students. <laughs> and uh, second question from Wasim: Do you do any measurements for velocity of the flow? Uh, what is the scale you're using? Uh, mm -hmm. The size of the nose, the nozzle. Yeah, this is a very, very interesting. Uh, in the past, of course, we measure only the pressure, the release pressure, and temperature at the orifice. And we use isotropic equations to calculate the velocity. We don't have any measurement device, right? After the time passes, and we got more financial support. <laughs> we bought these uh, super speed cameras, right? And, and, and there is a collaborator group, research group in Switzerland. So if they are looking to this video, thank you very much. They have this camera. So now when we are doing these jet fires, horizontal jet fires, but now we are also interested in impingement. They bring the camera, the speed, uh, speed uh, cameras, and the, with that equipment, you can measure your, the velocity. And it's amazing, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. PIB systems and stuff. Yes, exactly, exactly. The super speed, I the name correctly, it's super speed cameras, and it's fantastic. <laughs> I hope they're yes. listening. I hope the guys from Switzerland are listening. Yeah, thank you for the camera and for all your collaborators. Yeah, we have some students, some professors in Spain. The first time that I saw the camera, it was oh my god. Okay, thank you. And then uh, Heman, um, he said uh, it's methyl mercaptan. Mercaptan, this is the name, exactly, Heman. Thank you. So they put mercaptan into the hydrocarbons, 
to, yeah. to make that help. So I think the hydrogen is the same now smell. So we will have in the future, not only the color, this orange Halloween color, <laughs> but also that smell. Okay, thank you. And uh, Wasim is asking another one. Uh, how do you see the flow if you're using the PID? Uh -huh. the, the flow, we use uh, pressures, temperatures, uh, sometimes we use when they are in the uh, balance in the tank. So there are many, many ways to, to do it. Yeah. Thank you. Are you satisfied, Wasim? Just. Uh... <laughs> Awesome, so if, if we don't have any more questions, thank you again, Adriana, for, for coming. Ah, he meant uh, if uh, No, no, uh, no, 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 uh, so in the future, when you uh, finish the the uh, studies you're going that are going on now, uh, so you can present the, the interesting results and update us on that. And uh, thank thank uh, I'd like to thank everyone for joining today. Um, we don't have any uh, webinar scheduled uh, soon, but we'll keep you posted on what on what we have. Uh, in the future. Thank you again and uh, see you next time. Thank you. Have a nice day. Yes, and Hema, uh, we, we will upload the video to our YouTube channel. So um, follow us, sus subscribe. <laughs> Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.